There's almost nothing more fun than listening to two parties argue back and forth about who is right with no reconciliation or resolution in sight. Ever. Neat Nation, welcome back to the Unnamed Whiskey Show with me, Droopy Whiskey. Today we have a very simple premise in the show. We are going to decide, well I guess I'm going to decide, which one I think is better. Michter's 10, rye, or Michter's 10, bourbon. Now the Michter's 10 lineups, I mean these are unicorns for some. Special bottles for others. Maybe not as heavily respected bottles if you're Michter's 10 Bourbon among the most geeky of whiskey geeks. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. First, you'll notice the uh, setup tonight is a little bit different. Yes, well, it's because I don't have all the components of my normal setup. That's okay. We're rolling on. I want to make sure you guys get dank content every week. If you're looking for more whiskey content... Not reviews so much, but more fun whiskey talk slash whiskey history. And sure, my opinion on whiskeys from time to time. Get down and subscribe below and like and comment on this video. That would be amazing. You can also go to entryproofpodcast.com. That's my podcast. I do that with Brian Bikey at Abandoned Bourbon. That's a great place to supplement your, your YouTube whiskey content consumption. You can also, if you want, support the channel and the podcast at patreon.com slash entryproofpodcast. You can get some dope swag that way too. Maybe some uh, private barrel picks. Maybe soon. We're not going to waste any time tonight. We're really just going to get into this and really try and break apart which one of these whiskeys I'd choose. If you can only choose one, but, you know, maybe you don't have the chance of getting both, which one should you pick? A little bit of a, a breakdown. These are both 10-year-old Kentucky whiskeys. This one's a straight bourbon. This one's a rye. Now, these are also sourced whiskeys. Michter's has started making their own juice, but it's not old enough yet to start using their own juice for the bottlings of Michter's 10 bourbon and rye. So we have sourced Kentucky whiskeys bottled by Michter's. These are both the 2020 editions. This one, in particular, is a single barrel bourbon. It's 47.2% alcohol by volume. That's 94.4 proof. The rye, on the other hand, is just a little bit lower proof. 46.4, so then we're talking about 92.8 proof. So very, very comparable in proof point, which relatively low proof for limited releases. I mean, a lot of limited releases we're seeing in come, in, come in barrel proof. Uh, we don't have barrel proof right now. We've got, you know, these low 90s, which I'm not necessarily against. Just because the proof is lower doesn't it doesn't make it worse. Um, just means it's probably going to be a little bit less intense. Now, these are some of the sexiest bottles in the industry. I mean, St. Cloud is using something very, very similar, but you can really see the whiskey. See it. You can really see the whiskey in these bottles. Uh, and they're kind of a... Very nice. Very mid-century modern kind of shape. I mean, I just want this on my shelf. <laughs> and it's probably why it took me so dang long to open the rye. But whatever, I did it. And as I mentioned, uh, whiskey geeks generally seek after these bottles. These are not easy bottles to come by. Um, but if you were to just read reviews online, you'd see a lot, a lot more people seeking the rye right now. The rye has a much... Higher secondary value year after year. What people will say, general wisdom, is that the older releases, pre-2018 releases of Michter's 10 Bourbon, were quote-unquote better. Um, which, you know what, I don't know. I didn't have any that old. So today, I'm just going to be my judgment on the 2020 Michter's 10 release um, against the 2020 Michter's Rye. I did have the 2019 Michter's 10 Bourbon release, and I, I really liked it. My friend didn't like it as much, but it really kind of matched the profile I wanted. Reminded me of a really, really great barrel of Henry McKenna Tenure from Heaven Hill, which may make sense because there's a pretty good likelihood that Michter's 10 bourbon is sourced from Heaven Hill. Could maybe not be, but it also could maybe might be. I opened the rye like 
I opened it two days ago on one of our live streams. I had never tasted the 10 year rye and I wanted to get to know it a little bit. But I didn't try it against the bourbon yet. I wanted to do that here on the video. So you got my unfiltered like, oh, hey, what do I think? Is this better or is this better? So yeah, that's what you're going to get. And I'll, I'll throw down some tasting notes that I pulled from this as we go. Now, um, it did take me about 30 minutes to get this bottle open. Because while these bottles are very sexy, the wax tops on these things suck. I mean, they're really cool looking, but it's like concrete. It's not wax so much as like epoxy. I mean, I had to cut it last time. I think I'm going to have to cut it again. Dang it. Mother of butt. Get a knife. Hold, please. I'm going to try and do this carefully. I mean, this feels very perilous. Doing, I mean, I figure if I cut myself, at least I'm doing it live on YouTube. Man. This is almost as bad as Knob Creek um, wax. Like, this holds together better than Knob Creek wax, but Knob Creek, it just shatters and splinters into a billion pieces. I guess at least you can get into that, but they clearly wanted this bourbon to be savored. They wanted you to savor never opening your bottle because you can't get in the dang bottle. Okay, here we go. Bottle pop time. Solid. I mean, at least it gave us some solid pop vibes here. Very delightful nose properties just from the bottle pop. So going 10 bourbon on the left. Keep that right here. And 10 rye on the right. Again, we're trying to ask the question, which one is better? This is totally subjective, so this is my opinion on what's better and at the end i'll tell you you should buy this one or that one if you can only buy one and you should obviously take my opinion because you know because start with a little assessment here of the bourbon it's spicier than i expected like i remembered 2019 being really creamy and kind of nutty pretty viscous this one's nose reminds me of a knob creek pick more like more than a heaven hill Heaven Hill kind of nutty spiciness shows up. Um, I mean, you can't actually miss it in Ezra Brooks. <laughs> like, Ezra Brooks, particularly the single barrels, or the old Ezra 7, it delivers this really herbaceous, um, you know, it, it's more. It's a little bit nutty, but it's more herbaceous than a peanut, whereas Jim Beam is like straight peanut. Um, this reminds me more of Beam. I'm getting a decent amount of oak, peanut, some rice spice, black pepper, and citrus, lemon. I mean, really complex nose. I get layers. I like that. I like that. I get. Uh, I like that. I get oak for sure out of a ten-year bourbon. I would expect that, and then a lot of interesting spicy notes. Citrus kind of fruitiness. I mentioned that already. Sorry, I'm repeat repeating myself. Repeating myself. Uh, sweetness would be more in the molasses range, kind of funky, maybe a little mole in there, some chocolate, but funky chocolate, spicy chocolate. Cheers, dogs. Lots of caramel. Caramels. Notes of caramel. Black pepper. I mean, it's a really solid, really solid bourbon. Sweet oak. It tastes hotter, though, than the proof point would lead you to believe. And we're talking about something that's just above standard Elijah Craig. It's not what I would call smooth. I mean, it reminds me a lot of, like, a really solid Knob Creek pick. Is it better than a really solid Knob Creek pick? Well, I don't know. Um, that would be tough to say. I'd have to do them side by side. I will say it packs a lot of flavor for the proof point. And I'm in no way disappointed by it. It's sweet. It's not as creamy as the one I had last time. But it's got more spice. 
probably a little bit more complex than the one I had 2019. And granted, I mean, these uh, 10-year bourbons, they're single barrels. So, like, there's going to be some variance from barrel to barrel. So, just because you had 2020 single barrel, um, you know, and you're like, ah, I didn't like it as much. My single barrel may be great. Uh, the citrus I was getting on the nose, I think I would have pegged it more lemon. I think it's transitioned a little bit. I get some orange up in here. Like caramelized orange, that, I mean, that's a great note, and I get it. Um, it's solid. Caramelized orange with black pepper. A little smoky. Yep, that's probably the best way I can describe it. Not a bad start. Now we go to the rye. Now here's the thing. The rye is also a single barrel product so variation my Michter's 10 rye may not be your Michter's 10 rye so here's the thing the Michter's rye products I've had have a very pronounced Michter's note and I've struggled to articulate what this thing was like I'm I don't get it in a lot of other ryes but I got it in toasted barrel rye which I have behind me barrel strength rye and now this tenure rye, I'm like, what the heck is that? It shows up in the note in the palette, and I, I think I finally got it. Candy ginger. You've never had candy ginger. It's amazing. You wouldn't necessarily expect it in a whiskey, but it shows up, like boom, front and center here on the nose on this thing. Maybe a little like lemon zesty, but this it, it's more of the ginger style fruitiness. Not citrus exactly, but this spicy, fruity, juicy something. Funky. And then molasses, I think, is the is a good sweetness indicator on the nose as well. So we got candy, ginger, and molasses. The oak is not as prevalent. You know, the aging sweet oak. It's not as prevalent on the nose on the rye as it is on the bourbon. But it smells great in its own right. It certainly, this would be, I think, based on the nose and based on my tasting previously, more of a mood whiskey for me. Whereas the bourbon is just like, yeah, I could drink that. That's a great bourbon. I could drink that every night. The rye, while it's a great rye, it's such a unique rye. It's more like, well, sometimes, which is okay because Michter's 10, those are not everyday whiskeys. At least I hope not because they're expensive. Here's looking up your old address. Getting more viscosity out of the rye now. That candy ginger, as I mentioned, it's there. It's playing first fiddle. But I'm getting something something a little more easy, something a little more free flowing. There's a it's like a French vanilla coffee creamer. You know that coffee mate stuff? Not like standard vanilla, but the French vanilla. I mean it's a little bit a uh, little bit cinnamony in there. A little hazelnutty. A little cinnamon and hazelnut on top of this candy ginger. It works. It's really good. Now a note before I choose between these two. Um, just because I'm going to recommend one over the other doesn't mean I wouldn't recommend both. And it doesn't mean that I would recommend both. Because the downside to these non-barrel proof whiskeys is that they're $130 a piece MSRP. Which is a lot. Uh, it's not a, a small amount of, of money. Now granted, is it a lot compared to other special release whiskeys from other distilleries these days? No, it's not. But you have to make your value assessment. I'm not going to presume to do that for you. So let's try and decide. I think I need a little more of the bourbon here as I try to make my decision. You gotta oil up the old brain box. I think I'm I'm arriving at a decision here. It's informed by a couple things. One is, can you get comparable products? Can you get something similar to the Mictors 10 Bourbon? Is it available in the marketplace for less than 130 bucks? Yes, ish. In that, I do. I'm gonna put it in that Heaven Hill Knob Creek kind of family. And you can find Henry McKenna, 10-year. You know, if you can't get it on the shelf, you might be able to get this thing for 
you know, 60 bucks on secondary, you should be able to acquire Mictors 10 for way below the $130 for, did I say Mictors? I meant Henry McKenna. You should be able to find Henry McKenna 10 for well below what you can get the Mictors 10 for. That's one option. Another option is to go this route and get Knob Creek, which is nine years old at 120 proof. These picks are often awesome. These are from Jim Beam, and they're quite good. And it tastes kind of similar to what I'm getting from this Mictors right now. So there's probably some stuff similar to the, the, the Mictors on the market in the bourbon category for less money. Now, when you bring the rye in, a 10-year rye, that automatically puts the Mictors 10-year single barrel rye in a pretty exclusive company. Redemption is releasing some 9- to 10-year-old ryes at Barrel Proof from MGP for about 100 That's a good value, if you ask me. I haven't tried the, the newest rye releases from Redemption, but I plan to. I would like to. I'm going to. But other than that, I can't think of any readily available 10-year rye on the market that you can just go get. So you, you're going to pay a premium for a well-aged rye, particularly a well-aged Kentucky rye. A lot of the well-aged rye you see on the market, uh, for instance, the pig one, um, Whistle Pig, just blank there, um, their 10-year rye is Canadian. Alberta premium, that's Canadian. A lot of the rye you're seeing out there with an age statement is Canadian rye. Well-aged Kentucky rye, pretty rare pretty expensive so can you go out and find something comparable to this at a much lower price point not really so that's going to give a leg up to the rye on the flavor profile well let me get one more taste of each of these and then we'll see i mean the bourbon is just a dang good bourbon uh i get more candy as i go back it reminds me of a milky way like nougaty kind of big like almost fluffy feeling on the mouth it's really good. It's hard to beat. A candy bar. Mmm. A woody candy bar. But a good kind of wood. Starting to get some suggestions of dill out of this rye now. I mean, that candy ginger, black pepper, some molasses. I mentioned that. Um,. Get some herbaceous, some green qualities too, which I'm mean, granted not bad. It's not a bad thing whatsoever. Out of these two, I'm gonna recommend one. I have some reasons for this. I'm gonna recommend this one. I'm gonna recommend the Mictors 10 Bourbon. Now, Mictors 10 Rye is great. Again, uh, this is gonna be controversial because many whis whiskey geeks are like, Mictors 10 Rye is way better than Mictors 10 Bourbon. That's fine. Again, that's your opinion. But, Mictor's 10 Rye is going to be really hard to come by right now because it's the darling of the bourbon community. So, a few reasons why I'm picking Mictor's bourbon. One, I really like it. Like, I like it better than the rye. I think the rye is phenomenal, but I like the bourbon better for my palate. Second thing is, if you really want to go get a Mictor's 10 bourbon, you can do so without paying much more than retail. If you wanted to trade for it, acquire it through semi-sketchy means, you could do that. Um, whereas the rye is going to cost you an extra 50 bucks or so on the secondary market because everybody wants it so much. Because it's a little harder to find. If you're relatively new to bourbon slash rye, I do think that the bourbon, 10-year bourbon, is a more accessible flavor profile. So if you're like, oh, I want to try a Mictors 10, I think you should start with the bourbon because the rye is very, like I said, kind of niche. Like for me, it's something that I'll reach for when I crave it, and it's a special whiskey and will just like deliver when I want that. But it's not something that I'm like going to whip out for my, my brothers and, and say, you dude, you should try this rye because they might be like, oh, it's kind of weird. I mean, if you're not used to rye, specifically one with that pronounced ginger note, then yeah, it may not be for you. I mean, if you like sushi, it's probably definitely for you. Probably pair really well with sushi, actually. So that's it. Out of these two bottles, representing two barrels of the 2020 releases of Michter's Bourbon, 10-year-old bourbon, and Michter's 10-year-old rye, I would choose the bourbon. But I'm glad I have both.
Thanks, Nation. Appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully you dug that little assessment. Tons more content. Maybe a few whiskey wars headed your way in the very near future. I release a new video every Monday at 11 o'clock, and you can actually tune in to my channel Mondays at 11 o'clock Central Standard Time to catch the premieres. Maybe you're watching the premiere now. If so, dope. Glad to have you. Then you should also come back to the channel Thursday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time where I do a live stream, normally taste through maybe some craft whiskeys, talk about you know the bourbons or the whiskeys that I found that week. Maybe I didn't find any. That certainly happens. That's okay because, you know, money. But it's just a fun time to hang out chat whiskey for sure. If you want to, you can follow me on Instagram at Drew P. Whiskey. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode or the channel in general. If you have any ideas for episodes of either our podcast or this show, would love to hear those. Uh, or any questions you have, happy to answer. I hope you all have a fantastic week. Stay healthy, stay safe, and remember to keep it neat. Cheers, y'all.